Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. I'm really excited to be here today participating in the new YouTube collaboration, Scrapbooking from the Heart. On the 28th of each month, we're going to be creating layouts based on prompts designed to make one think about why they are scrapbooking a particular layout. In January, the prompt is optimism. So let's put this into context. If the prompt were 2021, for example, you could scrapbook about New Year's Day, what you did or didn't do, resolutions. But with a prompt like optimism, you could scrapbook about all of that, but you could scrapbook about anything really. This type of prompt is going to encourage you to look at your story and your photos in a little bit more depth. Now, if this sounds like too much work, hang on. My goal is to do a layout process video with a fun page design every month. But I also want to break down this prompt based scrapbooking process into hopefully three easy steps. Now, first, I want to talk about story and photo selection. So every month I'll share ideas on what may work with the monthly prompt. The second step is material selection. So I want to show how to really select papers and embellishments to truly support your story. And finally, the last step will be journaling. And that may be writing tips or it may simply be creative ways to incorporate journaling on a layout. Now, before jumping in, I do have to point out there's no way I would do this for all my pages in my album. Sometimes I like to scrapbook and not think, and that's good, and that's perfectly okay. But sometimes a page like this in your album with a little bit more depth is really, really rewarding. Trust me. I can't wait to see how the others interpret this challenge. Their links are all listed below, so be sure to check them out. Now the photos. Here's what I'm going to be using today. I have two photos. That's me taking a photo of a mushroom and the other one of a mushroom. So how does this relate to optimism? Well, last summer I couldn't travel to visit my family. I couldn't really socialize with friends much and I ended up taking a lot of nature walks with my camera. And at one point I had all of these photos of mushrooms and I'm thinking, what am I going to do with these? And then I realized these weren't really about mushrooms. These photos actually represented me appreciating beauty and seeing the good during really difficult times. So that's one way of doing a story about optimism. Here are a few other ideas. You could take it at face value. Are you an optimistic person or not? Or you could scrapbook about a friend or a relative. Maybe they're really optimistic and you admire them. Or you could scrapbook about how maybe optimism helped you through a difficult time, or maybe it didn't help you. You can do that with photos, with any photos, or with no photos. It's the story that counts there. So now you can see I'm moving on to material selection. So I'm going to be doing it for my page, and hopefully it will help you with yours as well. These photos are of me in nature. I'm actually quite literally on the ground. So I wanted the material to reflect nature. I wanted it to be kind of grungy. I also want it to reflect photography. So you can see I'm selecting paper. I have white and black cardstock. The three printed papers are all from the Storyteller Collection from Vicki Booten. That all has a real nature grungy look about it. So I'm happy about that. That lined paper is from Paige Evans' Go the Scenic Route. It's great to have lined paper in your stash for journaling. Now I'm showing you the embellishments. Those are two ephemera packs from the Vicki Booten Storyteller Collection. So I have those as well as those layered butterfly stickers. I feel I've got the nature part down pat here, but I really don't have anything that reflects photography. So what I'm going to do, or what I did do, is I went through my tools. You could also go through your other stash as well, your embellishments. But in this case, I went through my tools and I found a stamp set. So I have that one, Focus on the Good, it or Capture the Good, something like that. That has a camera. I also have that viewfinder wheel, that's a die. And I also have this stamp there and on it it says do something awesome every single day. And that's really what this story was about. So I'm going to be using that as well just to help 
zoom in on my story with my embellishing. The other tools there were just basic stuff I have on my desk, and I have two sets of alphas that I'll be using to create my title later on. Now what you see me doing is starting to create my foundation page. Now when I was deciding on a design for this layout, I went with something really easy. I went with one of my go-to designs. What one would call, or what Janet Madison from RTS Scrapbooking would call, a base page design. This is a page design I use all the time when I don't want to think, I just want it to work. And I can do it with anything, and honestly, any number of photos. Anyway, I'll explain it as I adhere it all to the page and all measurements are on the screen. So what I'm creating on the right hand side is basically half a frame style foundation. So I have my black paper, which is 12 by 12. I'm going to adhere everything to that. I have two smaller pieces on the right hand side that essentially creates my half frame style foundation. And I'm putting measurements, like I said, for all of this on the screen. And now after that, what I'm going to do is create a large border with three papers. The main one is going to be this butterfly paper here. I'm just going to put a narrow strip of that orange paper, and that is the flip side of that butterfly paper. It's also what I use to map my photos. And then I have a two inch strip there, but I did tuck it underneath with that black. It's almost like a tone on tone tile print. So what that does is it creates a border that's about seven inches wide and I'm adhering that to the page. So that's pretty much a base page that I use often. And then what I will do is I always put a mini page, I call it a mini foundation page, on top of it. And that's going to be that black square that you see that I've already cut out. That one there measures nine by nine, the black square. But I would like to mention that could be smaller or larger. What I also did was I went in and I rounded the corners of that white paper just to add a bit of visual interest. So now what I'm going to do is start creating my page on top of that mini foundation. That's essentially where I'm going to put my photos, my journaling, and most of my embellishing. What I'm going to do right now is cut myself out a journaling box. So I'm using this planner page. It's a die from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I use it all the time. And I'm using that lined paper from Go to the Scenic Group from Paige Evans. I mentioned earlier that I buy a lot of that. Basically, when I find a lined paper that I like, I buy a lot of it. And the reason why, it's one of those boring purchases, but you're so happy to have. And if you're doing a page with a lot of writing, personally, I find it helps to have lines. Some people it doesn't matter, but for me it matters. That one I like because the lines are only a quarter inch apart. I find when they are further apart, my light writing looks a little bit more disjointed. Anyway, I guess the message here is if you find a paper like that that you like, it is a good investment, I think, to buy a bunch of them. So you can see I adhered my photos. They're a little bit towards the bottom of that block on the right, and the journaling box a little bit towards the top on that block on the left. And as you can see, I have all of my embellishments around me, including my title on wax paper. So my title is Make Today Count. My plan is to place it along the right hand side. And off camera, I cut out three of those little Viewmaster wheels with my Big Shot. And now what I'm going to do is start creating embellishment clusters just above that photo on the right side and beneath that journaling box on the left. Essentially, I'm going to be making two main embellishment clusters here. Now, with the ephemera, what I did was I selected by color, but I definitely want to zero in at the end and come in with more theme-based embellishments, or in this case, I should say prompt-based embellishments. Anyway, this is about nature, it's about photography, and it's about being optimistic and trying to make the best of a, you know, not so good situation. So that's what I want my embellishments to reflect. You can see in the top right, I did some layering there. I've got a library card, I've got a bingo card, but it's tucked, you don't know it's a bingo card, and I've got another kind of 
library card, basically. I'm also tucking in a little Viewmaster wheel in that top corner. In the bottom, I've got a few little tabs there. One of them really works well. It says live, create, tell the story, repeat. But I really still want something more photography focused. So now I'm coming in with that stamp set that I showed you earlier, and I'm going to stamp out my camera. I will stop the camera and I cut it out with scissors. It was really easy to cut out. I'm not much of a fussy cutter, but that was pretty easy. It's just straight lines. That's a circle that was part of the same stamp set. It's like a little wheel with a heart in the middle. I stamped out a few of those. I ended up not using them, and I'm going to stamp out it that expression that says do something awesome every single day. So I stop the camera and what I do is I cut a, out the camera that's on the paper and then I end up cutting out that expression. You can see I did one in gray and one in black. I end up using the black one. I cut it out with those dies that I just showed you. Those are rectangle stitched dies from Stampin' Up! So I did a smaller one and then I created a mat in the black paper. So now I'm ready to continue placing my embellishing because I have everything now on the desk around me, on the table around me. I'm just adhering that expression on top of the black mat. I'm starting with the larger pieces and then coming in with the smaller pieces. And then what I'll do is once I'm happy with all of that, I'll speed up the film and I'm just going to adhere everything exactly where I had placed it. I'm taking that butterfly sticker sheet and just cutting it up because it's on a transparency and I, I know I'm going to use it so I'm just wanting to know which colors I want to use. I end up with the peachy one at the bottom which is what I was looking for when I actually stamped out that little heart for the middle of the camera. I wanted to repeat that color down there but I end up satisfying myself with that peachy colored butterfly that you saw me stick right there. So I end up actually, you're going to see later on, I don't even use that little heart in the middle of the camera. So I've sped everything up. I'm adhering it exactly where I had placed it, creating two main embellishment clusters, bottom left, top right. And once I know how much room that mini page, that mini foundation is going to take, I'm ready to adhere it to my main foundation page. I always wait until that step is done. I also wanted to make sure that I had enough room to place my title to my liking on the right hand side. So that's what you see me doing right now. I'm adhering my title and I'm basically starting with the last word. Then I come in and I do the first word. So I do count, then I do make, and that gave me the middle. So it was easier to position today in the middle of those two words. And it basically spanned along that entire nine inch block. So I'm really happy with that actually. And once that is finally down, all I'm going to have to do is come in with the small detail. So what I was thinking of was that heart in the middle of the camera, but I ended up putting one of those star puppy stickers from the Storyteller collection in the middle. Thought about doing it in the top right, but chose not to. And now what I'm doing is simply stamping the word amazing in that tab up, up top of that planner page. And then what I'm going to do is stop the camera do my journaling and then I'm going to come back and actually read it for you. I don't usually do this, but here I go. That's me taking more mushroom photos on Mont Belair, one of our favorite walking spots this summer. At this point in the season, August 15th, I had probably taken 300 mushroom shots, maybe more. Honestly, I found them pointless. For me, a photo needs a story. As it turns out, there was a story. These photos made me focus on the beauty that surrounded me every day, even during tough times. Summer 2020 was difficult, or different, I should say. That's for sure. It was okay, though. I loved our walks. So my prose wasn't amazing, but it does tell the story, and it certainly talks about seeing the good side of a bad situation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I'd be absolutely thrilled if you did. And make sure you check out to see what the other participants are doing. I know I will be. I can't wait to see what they did with this prompt. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.